Hello everyone, this is Zflex and welcome back to another A Producers Approach video. In this video, we're going to be looking at Grant and Alice's collab, Dead Man Walking. So if you haven't watched my videos in the past, I basically break down these videos into three separate sections. I'm an intro backstory section, breakdown analysis section, and then lastly an outro section. So this collab is a more recent collab um, that has come out from Grant and Ellis. At the time of me recording this now, this song had just come out a couple days prior. So this song is a more recent song I've been really into listening to um, since hearing the premiere of this song. And man, you could really hear the nuances of style within Grant's music, um, even when he does collabs. But Ellis is a newer Monster Cat artist. Um, there, There's, I think, one or two songs by him on Monster Cat that's pretty good. But... The collab of these two is not a collab I exactly expected, but from what I've heard from both of them individually, their styles do blend pretty well. But this major, the majority of this song is um, mainly a Grant kind of style in terms of song. So Grant is an artist that I've been listening to since he was Grant Bowtie, um, since he first started on Monster Cat. He changed his name later down the road just to Grant. Um, I believe his first song was Cloud Nine on 018, which was probably my, f it still is my favorite album, 018. But um, it's interesting because a long time ago when Grant released Cloud Nine, I actually sent him an email um, just, you know, for the heck of it back then. And I was just curious what kind of software he used to make his music. And I actually got a response, which was, out of the ordinary um, at that time. So that was really like a legendary moment, at least for me. And over the years, I've seen Grant's style evolve and really is one of the marquee kind of future bass artists on Monster Cat, probably the best now because World used to mainly be future bass, but now World expanded into more kind of synth wavy music, indie dance. So Grant still is in like that kind of future bass kind of realm, but he kind of pushes the limits and his music's always usually pretty good. So this song is like a harder version of his style, which I actually like quite a bit and it's super catchy and addicting. So I hope you guys like this breakdown and let's get into Grant and Alice's song, Dead Man Walking. All right, just to start off the bat, there is a nice kind of effects that starts um, sounding like a winding sound, almost like you would hear in like a tape film or something like vroom, which is a really nice effect to start off the song, it really gives off the vibe of what you're going to hear in the song. And then you do hear that guitar playing. And from what I know, Grant plays the guitar I, I don't know if it's like acoustic or electric but i've seen him play guitar before at least in certain videos or behind the scenes videos so i do believe that some of the guitar sounds are a little more organic with him recording um guitar sounds but sounds really good right off the bat and then you do hear the vocals i'm not sure if the vocals are from ellis or from another artist but um the vocals pair really well within the song and the style it's in so Let's keep going. No, I say I'm never like this. Do you need me the way you say you do? Try lightly through the water, through the light and darkness. If I'm not careful, my love might consume you. Pulling me back. Okay, so the guitar does play within the section and it kind of plays a chord progression. Um a really small one because it mainly is playing the root note, but it's a small kind of progression um, and it loops throughout the section while the vocals play. Uh, there was a lot of different VFX that Grant used within this section. So in his music, he uses a lot of different kind of subtle VFX in the background. So you heard like a winding, um, a little kind of uh, white noise sweep, and then you do hear a pad in the background which is like a really nice touch. And you do hear these little VFX in the background, which 
gives a lot of variation and adds a lot of flow into these sections where it's mainly vocal driven, but it's just something texturally just more interesting within the song to hear going back and forth while the vocal and the guitar is just playing because the guitar is just playing the same kind of chord uh, progression or the root note. So there's not much in terms of variation. So the other sound effects add more variation and flow within the section. So anyways, let's keep going. Back into my body I want to take my time with you Your lips are gonna haunt me If what you say is true Pulling me back into my body I'm just a dead man walking I'm just a pawn But nothing hurts better than you all right, within this section, you hear pretty much more of the vocals and the sign of you hear dead man walking. So you hear the main chorus and kind of the main vocal hook within this section. You hear more of the guitars as well. You hear another layer on the bottom. I think it's the guitars paired with the kind of a bass synth. It sounds like those two sounds are combined together, which adds like a whole kind of depth to the sound it's not just like a more high-end guitar strumming sound you hear like a lot of lower end it sounds like a fuller sound and then you do hear some percussion come in um, towards this section um, building up here and then i think this might be the build up into the drop or chorus or this is the drop or chorus because this is a two minute 51 second song it is pretty fast but Overall, there wasn't any real VFX. There might have been like a subtle white noise sweep, but um, for the most part, the texture was there. And then you hear the kick halfway through the section, um, just adding some variation, and maybe building some tension into this next section. But overall, this section is kind of where you hear like the meat of the uh, vocals and the chord progression. So let's keep going. Okay, so this is the build-up section, and it's very interesting because it's different because there was kind of a percussion kind of kick build-up, as I've noted previously, and then you hear the more synthetic pluck sound um, playing within the section, which is kind of like a nice instrumental chordal kind of intro breakdown section leading up into what the vocals are hearing in this section before it drops, and the vocals in this section is kind of what, what what made me want to do an APA video for this is because the vocals are paired with a nice vocoder on the bottom. So basically you have the main vocals playing and then you have a nice bass layer. Sounds like the vocals are detuned and then maybe going through a vocoder or some type of processing to make it sound more robotic, but in a deeper tone and texture, which gives so much depth and layer to the vocals so they sound a lot fuller and semi-robotic semi-organic so it's a nice kind of hybrid mix between the two vocals um in this section so anyways i really want to point that out and then there was a little bit of percussion leading into this uh drop section but not as much as before the section leading up into that more instrumental chordal breakdown section so anyways let's continue and that was the first drop and chorus so basically the rhythm and percussions in a halftime rhythm so kick on one kind of snarish clap on three um you don't hear the hi-hats for the first half of the drop and then the second half you do hear hi-hats which is a nice touch especially with this section being really focused on the um kind of almost like dubstep -y, complex row type drop where you hear the plucks play and then you have a wub at the end of the measure so you do have a lot of that kind of dubstep uh, vibe within this section with the halftime rhythm and such, but it is a little bit faster than dubstep, so it's more of like an electronic realm. And I do like how the vocals here are 
really kind of pitched down and going through that vocoded processor. So it's not like a higher pitch vocal. It's a lot lower pitch vocals saying pulling me um, throughout like, uh, you know, end of measures or end of two measures um, throughout the chorus. So it's really nice touch within this section because it's a totally different kind of vibe um, from the beginning when you hear the vocals, which ha don't really have as much processing other than reverb and delay. There's no detuning, there's no vocoding. And then slowly as it builds up so far, like through that break section, you hear a little bit of the vocoder. And then this chorus section, you hear like the vocoder and the vocals drop in like an octave or in a tone. Um, where it's a lot lower in, in kind of the timbre range. So that's a really nice thing to point out. And overall, the chord progression is pretty similar, but just kind of the glitchiness and the calm response between the different sounds, like the pluck sounds and the web sound within the uh, chord progression is really nice. Reminds me a lot of like complex show and dubstep, as I said. So let's keep going. to the fate out before us. Okay, so within this first section, you don't hear the percussion, um, and then the percussion comes in, and then the vocal is different. So it's a different verse, and it's completely new, so there's nice variation there. And then you do hear the guitars um, play again, and they don't have as much low end and timbre. So that's really nice um, as well because it doesn't really conflict and it doesn't, you know, kind of bleed into what the first chorus was, was like kind of bass heavy with a lot of more lower timbre sounds. Now it goes back into like the higher timbre sounds to indicate you're in the break section. Um, so you do hear a little bit of percussion going leading into like this section here, kind of the vocal hookish build up section here. But just within that second break section, I really like the variation of vocals. It's a totally different verse, which is really nice. And the VFX kind of used in the background were really nice too, kind of some sweeping and uh, VFX in the background and just the overall timbre change and the overall use of effects because you hear a lot more of the reverb and delay when you don't have a lot of the lower timbres. So anyways, let's keep going. Okay, so what I noticed this time um, within this kind of build up ish uh, section is the percussion playing sounds like a recording of the kind of drum stick um, tapping against like the snare. So like on the metal section, just sounds like it's tapping against something more so as the main rhythm. There is a kick that comes on every beat. Um, I don't know if it's at the beginning of the measure or halfway through the measure or towards the end of the measure. It sounded more like in the beginning, but you he you have that kind of uh, drumstick kind of kind of snap sound or kind of hitting sound as the main kind of flow. And then later on, you do hear um, another kind of more traditional percussive sound of like a hi-hat cymbal um, being played along with that um, drumstick tapping sound. So it's really cool how that pairs together in terms of the percussion because it gives a nice flow and variation, especially with the drumstick um, sound. I didn't really think that that sound would be really incorporated in a way in which it was as a more consistent base for this percussion rhythm. So anyways, um, pretty much in terms of the structure of this section is pretty similar to how it was previously. Um, the vocal hook kind of plays within the section uh, where you hear dead men walking. You do hear the lower timbres of the vocals come right back in and the chord progression is pretty similar and has a lot of kind of uh, huge like lower timbres and then has some atmospheres thrown in there. So anyways, let's keep going.
Okay, so that technically was the second drop. A little bit different in terms of no instrumental kind of build up before the drop. It kind of just went into that build up section and then dropped instead of having that instrumental section. So it just kind of went straight into it. And there was a little bit different of a VFX. It was a, like a lower, like kind of swooshing or sound or transitionary sound to some effect, which I noticed. And then it kind of drops into the same type of section um, as the first part of the first drop, um, which it's, there's not really any percussions, the halftime rhythm, and then you hear the guitar sound playing um, along with the plucks and the chord progression. And then you hear the lower um, kind of vocoded vocals, which it's interesting. It says like, I am pulling me or something like that or it is pulling me, which is interesting because that it is part you don't really hear. All I normally hear in the vocals is pulling me. So if it wasn't for this lyric video, I'm not even sure if I would notice the uh, lyrics of it is pulling me or um, something along those lines of that. So this is going to be the outro section. It is pretty rhythmic so far. The percussion just keeps going. Um, there's a little bit of variation with the guitar and the kind of lower mid bass sound so let's listen to it in the outro and then i'll talk a little bit more about the song Okay, so that is Grant and Ellis' song, Dead Man Walking. I'll back up a little bit. There's a lot that happened within this section. Um, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the vocals because that's kind of the main focal point that I want to point out within this section. So the vocals start off um, having a more kind of robotic kind of timbre um, with the vocoder and the lower timbre on the bottom. And then it switches from that to a higher timbre vocal. I think it's actually the higher timbre than the lower timbre. And then it goes switches back into the, like the kind of higher timbre vocal, which is really nice um, because it shows like the switching and the use of kind of the space for both the vocals where you could tell like the timbres are completely different. One's lower and has a more robotic vocoding feeling. And then it switches to like the more almost organic sounding vocal no detuning or whatnot. So I really do almost like the, it's not so much a calm response, but like the switch between the two. It just makes sense. It's not like out of the ordinary. It just flows really well. And the use of like the rhythms and the chord progression, um, the chords play and then the percussion plays and then it kind of outros into the main vocals playing out with the guitar. Um, now this sounds more like an electric guitar outroing the song and then you do, you hear more of the vocals kind of outroing. It's not the main hook of Dead Man Walking. It's a different set of vocals um, saying for this section. Um, yeah, I think it's a different section that I don't think we even heard throughout this whole song. So again, some more variation there. And the outro section, um, just with the guitar pairing with the vocal saying nothing better than you. Um, it reminds me a lot of like indie rock classic rock songs um to just name like a band i would say someone like cold rain or breaking benjamin they would have a kind of or cryo shell i guess um if you know cryo shell they're all kind of like rock bands i don't know if they're because they're like alternative rock but uh they all have outro songs in terms of rock songs kind of like how this song had it where the vocals have a lot of reverb delay uh, they say kind of like a vocal hook, and then you hear like an electric guitar just outro, like do no 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 no, like playing a chord, a chord or a chord progression or a riff, which is a really nice outro because that reminds me a lot of a rock song, as I mentioned before. So this kind of started off um, with the vibe of an alternative rock song, and then ends kind of with that vibe. So it 
the, at the, at certain points, this song doesn't really remind me of an EDM song. Um, it actually reminds me a lot more of a rock song with EDM elements, which I know a lot of, you know, alternative rock, hard rock, um, art like groups are kind of implementing more electronic song or sounds into their music. So I can't really tell the difference with this song, but I mean, it's really good. Um, dead man walking like just the vocals itself or like the way that they structured the vocals with the lower timbered vocoding and the regular vocals and just the switch off between the vocals is pretty much what sold me on this song as well as the use of guitars and just the overall feeling of a rock song like i really felt like i was listening to a rock song other than like the drop sections like overall the whole structure feels very much like a rock song and as you know me, I really love rock music, uh, probably as much as EDM music. So when I hear the two uh, styles combined, I always love those songs. So Grant always knocks it out of the park with his music. Ellis is a nice addition. I don't know if Ellis helped produce the song or actually did the vocals or did both, but they both made a fantastic collab and I'm just glad to hear a more recent Grant song within the style. I hope he makes more music within the style because this style he can pull off really well. I actually like it a little bit better than his uh, happier kind of future based stuff. Like this stuff is a lot harder, uh, a lot more rock based, which I like quite a bit. So anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Like, comment, subscribe. If you haven't checked out Grant's music, uh, look up Grant or Grant Bowtie. You'll find his stuff on Monster Cat and it's really good. Definitely one of the top artists on Monster Cat. And check out Ellis's music as well. I probably need to as well, but um, I think some of their songs are pretty good. But anyways, hope to see you guys in the next A Producers Approach video. All right, everyone. Have a good one. Peace.